So after we made the amazing queen-size OP loft bed, we just couldn't stop there. We needed space for video editing equipment and for two chairs. And this custom designed suspended desk is what we came up with. Taking the sun with me. Cut our own cable. Cut our own cable. Chain. <laughs> We don't know what we're going to do for the tabletops. Mariela's going to get a bigger cart. <laughs> She's come to save me. I don't think that's going to work. <laughs> She's on her way to the wood. Car is filled to capacity. Here we are. Mariela's completely cramped. Squished. But Jetty says, I can do it. <laughs> She's awesome. <laughs> So for the materials, we basically used a couple of 2x4s and 2x6s to build the frame of the desk. And then we selected Aspen for the tabletops and the shelf in the back. So we had to buy a lot of extra crap too, like eyelets and chain closures to complete the suspension of the desk. Like the loft bed, all of the wood for the desk was measured and hand cut in the same tiny bedroom. The 2x6s of the desk frame were attached to the bed frame using the same hardware that we used to build the bed. So we drilled new holes into the three legs of the bed and attached the desk. We lost a flat washer, people. We hung the chains with eyelids that screwed into the bed supports above. It was pretty awesome. The bed turned out to be a great makeshift sawhorse, so we used it to cut the tabletops. And we had to cut it by hand, so we were extremely fortunate that it turned out to be completely level when we were done. We completely hung it to make sure that everything would fit before we actually finished it. And then we were so excited and needed a desk so bad that we just left it that way. Yeah, it was already classified as a surface in our world. There was no turning back. Okay, so I just went over to Kim's in the Clarendon. That's a little hardware store here in Edgewater, in case you aren't familiar with it. It's quite the little shop. They seem to have absolutely everything every time I go in. Um, so I went over there on a secret mission today, and I found some really awesome stain. I've always asked the question. I'm one of those people that every time I go into the store, I ask the same question because I keep expecting a new answer. Well, today, I thought, well, I'm going to try, and I'm going to ask him. I'm going to ask him the question I always ask everyone, and that is, why, why should I go with staining and then adding a coat of polyurethane, um, as opposed to just doing the all-in-one? And I feel like when you ask that question at like Home Depot or Lowe's or whatever, they will always say, well, you know, this one has all the steps included. You only have one step. This one, you just do it separately. 
that's not a very good answer. So today I asked the nice gentleman and he just went crazy into this reason why and explained to me that it's one step, but he hates it. If you chip it or you scrape it or scratch it, which I've got kitties and they scratch my desk. When you scratch it, apparently the it scratches off the color. I don't want every little scratch to show that the color is gone. So it was important to me that I do the two-step, even though it is a lot of work.